Yes, we can hear you very well, Karen. Okay. So, <clears throat> I would like to welcome all participants of the webinar. And um, this uh, webinar uh, will be um, to get your feedback on um, how the Tapipedia should look like. And before I would like to go on Tapipedia, because some of you um, who participate in this seminar are not aware about what is the Tropical Agriculture Platform, I will just very quickly show two, three slides uh, so that you understand the overall context before, before I pass on to Nikos. So this uh, Tropical Agriculture Platform is a um, mechanism to facilitate capacity development for agriculture innovation systems in the tropics, and this is a G20 initiative. So there was a mandate from the G20 uh, that FAO together with partners around the world should work on this. We have more than 40 partners. And um, we have as target groups, policy makers, institutions, private sector, civil society, all active in agriculture innovation and capacity development for it. And the first two years we have uh, uh, used to set up the operational framework of the platform and also uh, to have an inception phase in which with three regional partners Needs assessment were conducted in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, in uh, South Asia and Central America. And based on this regional needs assessment, uh, the top partners, which are research, development organizations, um, fora for research, extension, and education, uh, the big development ag agencies like IFAD, uh, World Bank, uh, but also institutions like CARBI, the CGIR. So uh, they have developed this action plan based on this needs assessment. And during uh, 2014, together with a European partner, uh, Agrinatura, FAO, uh, and Agrinatura, and of course uh, the members of the TAP steering committee, assisted in developing a project to um, finance the implementation of the TAP Action Plan. And um, part of this uh, TAP Action Plan is the development of um, TAPipedia. But uh, what, what do we expect from, uh, from the Tropical Agriculture Platform? Um, we would like to address the problem to receive greater coherence of capacity development initiatives, because it was found in, in uh, the regional assessments of TAP, but also of other organizations, that there are a lot of in, uh, capacity development uh, initiatives in the field, but they are not uh, well coordinated. They do not necessarily um, uh, address country needs and country ownership. Uh, there is very little alignment uh, with uh, national needs and priorities. And um, there is often very little impact. So there is really a need uh, to scale up uh, capacity development intervention. This is about uh, TAP. And of course, um, there are different experiences. There is a lot of activities on individual capacity development, but not enough on institutional uh, capacity development and developing the capacity of the enabling environment. And um, there is also experience in, in some places, but not widely shared. And um, the top partner said, we would need a system where we can share common capacity development solutions and knowledge sharing. Um, around capacity development for agriculture innovation. And so the, 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 the idea came up to create a communication system for it. And this is what is Tabipedia about. There is also one important component of the Tropical Agriculture Platform is to develop a common framework uh, for capacity development um, with tools for assessment of needs, with tools for monitoring and evaluation, and with tools and methodologies 
for impact assessment, but also for capacity development design. And all this framework with, with methodologies and tools, this is also uh, a top partners find that this is also content which should widely shared and Tapipedia, you see the two arrows on the on the graph. <laughs> Um, this is uh, also should also be a role of Tapipedia to make this this common framework uh, widely known and uh, widely used. And um, so this is actually my my intervention at the beginning. And now I would like to just um, explain you how you can engage in this webinar. So we would like suggest that you write your comments while. Um, Nikos uh, Manuselius is uh, providing um, his presentation. If you have comments, questions, please write them down on a paper or in a separate Word document during the presentation. And after the presentation, you can post your feedback grouped, uh, grouped around uh, three general themes, the design and uh, uh, architecture of Tapipedia he's proposing, uh, different Tapipedia components, and the choice of the software platform, yeah? And then I will uh, read the, the comments you post on the chat, and uh, Nikos can address them, yeah? This is so far my introduction, and now I would like to pass on uh, to Nikos, Nikos to continue or to start his uh, presentation. Thank you. Karen, thank you very much. Welcome to everyone. Um, I would like to thank you for uh, joining the webinar and uh, being available to give your feedback to the concept uh, behind Tapipedia and the way that we envision uh, Tapipedia to be set up. And the reason is that, uh, as Karen explained, Tapipedia is coming as a system that will uh, become a, an enabler, an information sharing enabler uh, among existing stakeholders and among existing systems. It's not uh, aimed to be something that will replace existing systems, uh, but it aims to be a platform, uh, an information technology platform that will facilitate the discovery, uh, the presentation and the sharing of the experience and the information and the knowledge that is across the members. And this has been also my main uh, concern and consideration during uh, the design that I'm proposing today and where I would really welcome your feedback. There are two parts in this, uh, in this design. The first one is uh, the overall logic that I will try to explain in the next few slides. And then there is a design document, um, a, a report, an actual report, which uh, we would be happy to share with you and collect your feedback uh, on this report also uh, during the next uh, 10 days. So I will briefly focus on uh, three uh, areas, three topics uh, during uh, the webinar. First of all, I would like to give you an idea of the different requirements that we had to consider. Second, to give you an idea of the basic logic behind the conceptual design, separating this in the way that we are thinking about the design of the high-level architecture and some key components uh, that are coming out of this architecture and uh, the way that we have uh, considered and the way that I'm proposing to go with a software platform, a software technology choice. First of all, the way that we treated the requirements. The requirements are a lot coming from different sources and diverse sources. First of all, in 2012, there was a consultation, a stakeholder consultation uh, around TAP, and there were recommendations of uh, high level, but lots of them coming about what such a platform could do. Eh? Second, the regional assessments uh, that took place by TAP partners, they came also in some cases with specific recommendations about what Tapipedia could also provide to them, what Tapipedia could do as a system. Uh, third, the, the way that the conceptual design was actually uh, prescribed 
uh, when I was uh, allocated to the task, there were some things that were expected to be done. For, for example, that the conceptual framework around uh, capacity development for agricultural innovation systems, it should be presented in a nice way uh, to the user. So it was part of the requirements and the important requirements of this work. And then there was also a meeting of uh, an expert group, experts coming from around uh, the members of uh, TAP, uh, that took place in Montpellier in uh, March. And there was a session with these experts, a presentation of, of some initial ideas and a collection of required, uh, requirements from them as well. We grouped the requirements in uh, three main categories. The first category had to do with who is expected to use Tapipedia. And from, from the whole long list of lots of potential stakeholders and uh, roles that would benefit, which are the ones that should be prioritized? Second, what kind of information should Tapipedia include? Again, from the long list of things that it could include, which is the information, which are the content types that seem to be more uh, important for this work. And third, what are the key important services, functionalities and features that such a system should provide? The type, the way and the type, the type of requirements that we collected and the way that we handled them was like the way that is being presented in this table. So there was a list of requirements that we tried to group uh, into similar ones, classify them according to whether they were user-related, content-related or system-related, and then also try to provide an initial assessment of how important and how relevant these requirements are for this phase of the work. So. Uh, for example, I'm having some examples here, uh, user-related, we identify requirements like it should be a global system and therefore addressing a global audience. Uh, it should also particularly focus on uh, connecting with national uh, stakeholders, organizations that are focal points in the different countries. It should involve and target rural extension advisory services, and so it goes. And what we did was reflecting on those trying to put some of them in higher priority, some of them keeping them in the agenda, but with a little bit less of a priority, so that we get uh, some messages coming from uh, these requirements. So we have the user requirements. I'm giving you in this slide some examples of content-related requirements. Here you can see them also grouped in some way like uh, what kind of uh, capacity development programs and projects and activities are being organized, which are the organizations that are organizing them, or uh, lessons learned, case studies, systems, uh, methods for monitoring and evaluation, and system software related requirements that are related to specific functionalities and features that such a system should provide. These requirements were fed into the conceptual design, the logic of the conceptual design. And there were two things uh, that we had to do there. First of all, try to define a high-level architecture. And this is the high-level architecture that we have arrived uh, today after several iterations with uh, the core group. What does this architecture say, actually? is that, and I would like you to look at the bottom part of uh, the diagram, that Tapipedia should serve, first of all, as an index, as a pointer, as a catalog of relevant knowledge sources and relevant data sets and collections on capacity development for agricultural innovation systems that are also out there. There are lots of organizations, especially in the members, of TAP, but also out there working on relevant topics, we would like Tapipedia to provide an entrance point so that people can discover this information. Organized 
in the proper way. So it needs a layer that will be provided by Typepedia for indexing and cataloging and sharing this kind of information. But this should serve as a gateway to these sources. The second important part is the one that is on the top right of the diagram, is the actual presentation of the framework, the Capacity Development for Agricultural Innovation Systems framework. This requires a part of the platform of the system that will have some sophisticated authoring and co-creation, co-editing services that will allow the people developing the framework to present it in a nice and interactive way online, a nice interface to be designed and implemented that will allow users to browse through the different components of the framework, to see the supportive material, to see the explanations of the different components, but also to see relevant knowledge resources coming from the TAP network explaining or supporting or uh, being available to use in relation to some part of the framework. That's the knowledge authoring services part. There is the part that is on the top left that has to do with the way that you can discover the knowledge, the information that is dis made discoverable through Tapipedia, the parts that have to do with the framework, the supportive resources, but also all the materials out there. This requires some very elaborate and well thought uh, discovery <laughs> services, but also the presentation of the search and discovery services uh, using responsive designs so that they can fit different devices. And to be able to do something like this, a quite well thought and elaborate repository structure or set of uh, databases within a, a repository will be required. So in the middle, the component that I, I describe as a knowledge repository is a, a crucial part of this. One of the important requirements coming from uh, different sites was also the need to be able to monitor the way that this information is being contributed searched for and used in this uh, overall architecture. And that's why there is a specific uh, component that has to do with uh, analytics, the analytics dashboard, as it, it is being described in this overall architecture. Going a little bit deeper now into some of the important parts of this uh, picture, there are some key components that uh, have been identified as uh, important from the requirements. Three of these components were in the diagram that I presented. Another one has to do with having a component that will be dealing with the community and the collaboration uh, features that you can provide to the members of the community, which in this conceptual design uh, I propose to, to view as a separate platform or as a set of different separate platforms that could be used. To explain those, everything that has to do with the organization, the storing, the representation, the authoring and the dissemination and discovery of uh, the information in Tapipedia or through Tapipedia has to do with the, what I call the Tapipedia Knowledge Services component. It includes most of the things that you have seen in the diagram of the high-level architecture, like the repository part, either actually storing or cataloging with metadata relevant knowledge resources, the authoring and co-creation part that will allow for editing the information about the framework, the presentation of the framework, but also the localization of this information in different languages and different versions for a particular country application. The sharing part, this is the part where the different stakeholders through the network, from the network, can join. They can indicate that they are working on these topics. They can indicate and describe the initiatives that they work on, the knowledge and the outcomes coming out 
from these initiatives. Relevant materials, methods and tools that can be used, that could be of relevance to TAP. And all the services that have to do with searching, discovering and navigating through the information. A separate and important component is the way that the framework will be presented. So I'm highlighting this as a separate uh, component in the conceptual design because apart from putting the, doc the, the information uh, in a textual, for example, or a graphical format uh, so that someone can uh, read through this, it is very important to have it in a way that uh, will allow users to view this and navigate through this uh, online. It should be using some interface designs that will be interactive enough. You can click through the different components, see one part of the framework, click on another part of the framework, get uh, the description of this part, but also dynamic sources coming from uh, other sites, but also quite intuitive, not very difficult, huh? easy for people to work on and play with. This should be linked with the knowledge resources in the repository. This should be linked with material that you can find either stored within Tapipedia as a system or found in the network. This should be designed in a way that can be easily and automatically adapted to the user device. If I'm accessing uh, Tapipedia from a smartphone or a tablet, I should be looking at a version of it that will fit my device. The third component has to do with the analytics dashboard and it's very important, uh, I believe, for a couple of reasons. So what does it do? It is responsible for logging and collecting information on the way that the users are interacting with the system, accessing it, searching into the system, viewing the different parts and functionalities. And I would like to focus on the way that users are searching into the information uh, related to capacity development for agriculture innovation systems. First of all, to have an idea of which part of this knowledge is proving to be of use, is proving to be of relevance to the audiences, the different audiences around the world. And second, to understand if there is something missing from the knowledge that is there. Are users searching for something that we don't have in uh, the framework? Are they using for something that we have not included in the resources that are being catalogued from other sources? And all this information should be presented in a user-friendly way to the uh, team that is uh, managing Tavipedia. And there is also a fourth component that Again, I'm saying I'm, I see as a different uh, system uh, in the big picture that has to do with the community and collaboration. This has been uh, indicated uh, from different uh, channels during the requirements collection. It has to do with the way that the community members, they can communicate and discuss about the way that they apply agricultural innovation uh, in their own context. The way that they uh, implement capacity development interventions to facilitate this. The way that they understand and translate different parts of the framework in their own needs. So this is a, a requirement, a set of requirements, a component for something that is quite elaborate but also very context specific. This is why, in the bigger picture, uh, trying to zoom out of uh, Tapipedia and to try to position it and link it with an ecosystem of other uh, platforms, uh, I believe, and this is the re one of the assumptions and the recommendations made in this conceptual design, and I would really like your feedback on this, I believe that it should be able, first of all, to make existing information that is in other sources 
discoverable. So it should serve as an index, as a catalog of information that is also available through other sources. But it should also be able to push information, make information discoverable, not only through its website, but also through other platforms and other systems and other websites. So it should make information discoverable through platforms that, for example, are serving as marketplaces, which is one of the needs of TAP to also set up uh, some kind of marketplace. And uh, there are different platforms that could be used for this purpose, but also to push this information and uh, use this as a reference uh, material or as discussion material through different community and collaboration platforms, platforms uh, that are being used in different contexts and by different communities. And this is one of the reasons why I think that uh, TAP, TAPipedia itself uh, might not need to have embedded in the, system, in the design that I'm describing a single community component and collaboration component but it can use one of the other platforms, the existing platforms, uh, as its host. Then I'm going to the third part of uh, this presentation that has to do with the software that can be actually used. There, were, there are different options. Huh? Depending on what you would like to do and the purpose that you would like to, to serve, you could choose a number of uh, software platform options and many of them could serve some of or more of the needs that uh, I have presented uh, so far. For example, if you want to have a very nice interactive presentation of the information around the framework, uh, why not use a wiki platform huh? um, to, to present it in a Wikipedia-like format? There are different software systems like MediaWiki which is very popular, that could be used for something like this. Or if you want to set up a repository, uh, a knowledge repository, why don't can you use something, uh, an existing solution like uh, this space? Or uh, if you want to set up a, a website that will provide access to this information, there are several content management systems that can be used. What is important in our case is that uh, we don't come with a solution that is uh, that has multiple different components that have to be separately maintained and operated uh, and administered. Uh, so the recommendation that I make is that a choice is made of a good and solid and popular and well supported uh, content management system that has components and modules that can cover the required functionalities and avoid going for different separate solutions uh, that need to be separately maintained uh, and evolved and uh, managed. And especially focus on a solution that can integrate nicely and in a proven way with uh, other technologies. And this is why the recommendation that uh, I make and that uh, we, we are considering in the conceptual design is going for uh, the content management system called Drupal. Uh, and especially in the version of Drupal that includes some modules that are specific for uh, agricultural information uh, management, the so-called Agri-Drupal version. Uh, there are reasons for suggesting something like this. Uh, it is already in use and it's being put in place by uh, several uh, partners in, uh, in our community. <coughs> it also has a very large <coughs> software developers community uh, to support it and maintain it and extend it. Uh, it has a community uh, within FAO and the Agricultural Information Management Standards a group that is working and uh, supporting the use of uh, AgriDrupal and it can also support different other needs 
a little bit more uh, specialized uh, that uh, we would need for organizing the knowledge in the in the system like for example that it can support uh, agrovoc as a classification uh, you can manage different information and document types it can provide implementation for existing uh, metadata standards that can be linked and combined uh, it has enhanced content retrieval options and functionalities it has enhanced multilinguality support it's easy to create new versions in different languages and it also has uh, very elaborate uh, features and functionalities to allow sharing information in interoperable ways by the implementation of different protocols so these slides give an idea of why uh, we are strongly considering uh, and suggesting uh, Drupal in its agri uh, version for uh, Tapipedia. So that was the overall presentation of uh, uh, the conceptual design. I would welcome uh, now your questions and your feedback. I will hand the floor to Karen to facilitate this, but I would really appreciate it if we could group them in these categories. Thank you.